Hi guys and welcome to lesson 16 on conditional expectations. So we've talked about conditional PMFs, uh, probability mass functions for two discrete random variables x and y. Remember that uh, the pro p sub x given y of i given j is uh, the probability that x equals i conditioned on y equals j. And given that y is some value, so we're going to assume y equals some number little y, what's the average value of x? And the expected value of x is given by this formula. The expected value of x knowing y equals y is the sum over i of i times p sub x given y of i given y. Or if you wanted to expand that out without using the probability mass function, it would look like this. So uh, the expected value of x knowing y is little y is the sum over all i's of i times the probability x equals i conditioned on y equals little y. So the only thing that's really changing here is this conditioning. If you got rid of this highlighted part, you'd see it's the sum over i of i times the probability x equals i, which is just the regular expected value of x. But once we know that something about y, that will change the average value of x. So uh, if we now have the information that y equals this little y, we have to change the probabilities that x takes on the values i. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, if we roll two dice and the sum of the rolls is 10, what's the expected value of the first roll? So in general, the expected value of a die roll is 3.5, but that's got to change if the sum of that roll plus another roll is 10. For example, it can't be 1 any longer because 1 plus 6 is only 7. There's no way that 1 plus the second die roll could be 10. So if x is the value of the first roll and y is the total, we're looking for the expected value of x given that the total is 10 of the two rolls, which would be the sum from 1 to 6 of i times the probability x is i given that y is 10. The only values that x could be if the sum is 10 is uh, 4, 5, or 6. And each of those rolls is still equally likely, so now they all have probability 1 third. And plugging that into the formula, it's now a one-third chance of a four, a one-third chance of a five, and a one-third chance of a six, which sums to five. So given that the sum of the two rolls is 10, x has an expected value of five. Okay, for a second example, let's say that we flip a coin two times. x will count the number of heads in the first flip, so it's either zero or one, a one if we flip the heads in the first flip. And y is going to count the number of heads in the first two flips. So it's 0, 1, or 2, depending on how many heads you get in the first two flips. So we're going to use a conditional expectation formula to solve for all the values of y. So y could be 0, 1, or 2. And the expected value of x, if y equals 0, this first one, well, uh, y equals 0 means in the first two flips there are no heads. So that means the first flip isn't a heads and therefore the expected value of x has to be 0. If y equals 1, that means that there's one heads in the first two flips. But that one heads could be either the first flip or the second flip. So x has a one-half chance of being heads. And if y equals 2, that means both flips are heads. So then certainly the first flip was a heads, and x equals 1. And here we have a function where we're plugging in a value for y. So we could plug in y equals 0, y equals 1, or y equals 2. And you can see that, uh, in general, we could find a function that would be the expected value of x given y, and it's a function of y. And in this case, it ends up being y over 2. So if I plug in y equals 0, I get 0. y equals 1, I get 1 half. y equals 2, I get 2 over 2, which is 1. And uh, this is this generalizes, so conditional expectations are actually functions on the variable that you condition on. Okay. So what about if x and y are independent? Well, in that case, uh, given y equals little y, we plug in this sum for the expected value of x, and the probability that x equals i given y equals little y is just the probability x equals i, because with independence uh, we have no information, and so that just gives us the expected value of x. 
And viewing this as a function, e of x given y, it's just a constant because if they're independent, x takes values uh, with the same probabilities no matter what value y is. So e of x conditioned on y is just the constant function e of x. This works the same way in the continuous case, so we've also talked about uh, conditional PDFs, right? f of x given y of little x given little y. Um, and now here the expected value of x conditioned on y equals y uh, is going to be similar to the regular expected value formula, x times the f of x, where f is the PDF for x, but f has to change to be uh, conditioned on y, so it's going to be x times f of x given y very similar to the discrete case. And the same properties are going to hold, so the expected value of x given y in general will be a random variable, that, or not a random variable, sorry, a function that depends on y. And whenever x and y are independent, then uh, that function is just a constant e of x. So given y, it doesn't change the value at all. Okay, so for a simple example, let's suppose x is exponential 3 and y is exponential x. So uh, whatever value x takes on, that's the parameter for y. So if we're conditioning on x equals 3, then the expected value of y given x equals 3. Remember, uh, if it's exponential lambda, then the expected value is 1 over lambda. So if we have uh, x equals 3, that means that y is exponential 3, and so the average value of y is 1 one third. And this would be true for any value x that's positive, so um, x is going to take on some positive value little x, and then knowing what value x takes on, we could say the expected value of y is 1 over little x, and so in general, as a function of the random variable x, uh, the expected value of y given x is 1 over the random variable x. Okay, well that's all for now. I guess I'll see you